Hello and welcome to the Monthly Marquee. I'm your host, Bart Lovins, Director for the Hardin County Schools Performing Arts Center. Our first guest is also our PAC Kid Spotlight. Please welcome Maggie Kowalski. Hi, Maggie. Hi. Hey, thanks for doing the limousine with us today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this, we were saying this is your first limousine ride? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're really thankful that Skaggs Limousine helps us out with that. And you got to bring half of your family with you. Yeah, right? I did. <laughs> so tell us all who was in the vehicle with us today. Uh, my parents, my mom and dad. And then my younger brother and sister, Haley and Aiden. So. And you are, you are literally the middle child. Yes. yes? <laughs> okay. Cool. So, what is that like growing up with a family that large, and trying to carve out your own niche in the Ooh. family? <laughs> it's hard because there's a lot of them, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but I think it's. It's been fun growing up with a big family because it's a lot of friends. So <laughs> Built-in friendships, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They have no choice in the matter. Right. Yes. <laughs> and you've been dancing for how many years now? I'm on my 14th year now. Okay. With Allegra Dance Theater. Yes. And this month you're going to be playing Cinderella mm -hmm. in their ballet performance of Cinderella. Yes. What would you want to tell people who uh, maybe aren't familiar with the ballet of Cinderella uh, that is different or that is special about it from the story they may be familiar or the Disney movie that they may be familiar with? Well, first, since it's a ballet, there's no words. The story is completely told through the movements and the choreography. And um, I think one thing that's different from the Disney movie is we have a stars scene. So we have like stars and like queen of the night sky queen of constellations stuff like that and it kind of shows like the magic of cinderella transforming into mm. this like going from like peasant sort of to like a beautiful like princess so i think that's one thing that's different that people enjoy about the show so i think i think another thing that's a little different that i think people really enjoy are the stepsisters yes <laughs> what would you, you want to share about the stepsisters well, <laughs> they're <laughs> definitely different from <laughs> the dancers. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the stepsisters are definitely one of the favorites, especially amongst the school kids that mm. come in to see the show. They're, they're funny. <laughs> and how so, long have you been dancing in the Cinderella Ballet? This is my 10th year. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you kind of, you, we were talking in the limousine, you, you start as a bumblebee. Yes. <laughs> and you work your way up the, mm -hmm. the ladder, as it yep. were. And hopefully at some point in time you get to play Cinderella. Mm -hmm. And you're sharing that role with how many other dancers this year? Uh, just one this year. Oh, two this is a slow year. Yes. Because sometimes it's as many as <laughs> five, five girls playing Cinderella. Mm -hmm. And when you're not playing Cinderella, you're playing another role in the show. Yes. Which is, what role is that you told me? I know. Uh, Queen of the Night and Ballroom Butterfly. Ballroom Butterfly. And likewise, the other Cinderella is mm -hmm. playing two, two other roles as well? Um, well, for Cinderella, she'll just do Cinderella. Right. And then she'll do Queen of the Night and Ballroom Butterfly as because well. Because in the, in the other performances. Yes, we trade off. So you're not only learning the lead role in the ballet, you're learning two large supporting roles yes. as well, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you balance all of that? I've always found that amazing. Well, it's actually easier just because I've seen the ballet so many times, oh. like since it's my 10th year, like it's become easier. So like some of the parts I know just from watching it so many times, but um, yeah, it's, it's a lot, but <laughs> rehearsals and stuff. It and how long have you been rehearsing the show? Um, we started rehearsals back in September. Yeah, so. yeah. And do you do you audition for the roles or does Miss Zagar, the, the dance teacher there, select b based upon what she's seen in class? Yeah, she selects you. So. Yeah. And um, one of the things we were talking about also today is uh, we have pack kids who come in that are uh, pursuing a career in the arts, and then we have pet kids that are not. And one of the things that you've been talking about today is that you're interested in keeping dance part of your life yes. as you grow older, but it's not uh, what you are choosing as your career. Tell yeah. us a little bit where you'd like to see yourself in a few years. Um, well, I want to go to college and get my degree in nursing sciences so that I can become a neonatal nurse with the babies and like the NICU. I was going to so. say, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, I have an idea what that means, but mm -hmm. what exactly? does a neonatal nurse do? 
Um, well, whenever the babies are born, if they have any sort of like defects or issues after they're born and they're in the neonatal intensive care unit, I would be the person that's kind of just watching them and taking care of them before they can go home. So That sounds incredibly rewarding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you said that you got interested in that uh, when your brother was born. Yes. And and because he was he was uh, was he a preemie was he yes okay he was born six weeks early so mm. he was in the NICU for twelve days before he could come home <laughs> isn't it I think it's always fascinating how one event can change the course yeah. in your life and mm -hmm. that I don't know who was the do you remember who the nurses were at those time but they must have made a huge impression oh on yeah you. yeah <laughs> and what do you think how does that relate to dance, or maybe a better question is, what do you think you've learned through dance that can help you in the pursuit of that? Well, I've learned the um, professionalism of just working with lots of different types of people, and also just dance and nursing work hand in hand, just because they're both about like the body and mm. like how you use your body and stuff. So they kind of work hand in hand and. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, and, and, and one of the things we talked about this morning too on the radio uh, was that uh, as a dancer, you are accustomed to communicating and being communicated yes. with mm -hmm. uh, through physical uh, movement as opposed to voice. And here you have these babies yeah. who can't tell you anything, so you've mm -hmm. got to interpret what's going on from the physical signs that you're seeing. I just yes. find it all really fascinating. Yeah. I, I, there's so many <laughs> wonderful connections. Pieces together. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. And I know that uh, Miss Carol also does physical therapy. Yes. And so that's kind of another kind of vein of that kind of thing mm -hmm. that I, I would think would also, uh, it's very intuitive to yeah. dance, I think. And uh, do you have any idea where you're headed to college yet? Um, right now I'm headed towards UK, I think. Okay. So. Well, we wish you the best in all your pursuits. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My next guest is Ms. Carmen caldera Brotska, representing the Elizabethtown Performing Arts Center. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you? Doing good. I'm enjoying our new foliage. Yes. We, 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 we're, we're, Better Homes and Gardens has visited and given us a little upgrade here. Yes, and it's so springy compared to the weather outside. To I outside. love it. <laughs> yes, yes, this feels much better. Well, there are things not only springing up here, but also at the Elizabethtown Performing Arts Center. How's yes. that for a transition? That How is like beautiful. That? Your mother would be so proud she of me. She would. Yes, she would. <laughs> Yes, and she is actually kind of at the core of what we're doing right now. Tell me more. Um, we are doing a play that she wrote That's right. right, about 15 or more years ago called Where the Green Things Play. And they did a uh, reader's theater of it, which we were just talking about, at the Backstage Cafe when she first wrote it. Um, and I believe that was in 2005 because I was pregnant. So <laughs> it's easy for me to remember that year. Um, and I was Jade. And I was just talking to Gwen from Hardin County Playhouse, and she was in it as well. She was the sky. Um, so this will be the world premiere as far as a staged production mm -hmm. of it. And we are working with the gifted, talented drama students from Elizabethtown Independent Schools from the middle and high school. And we've also brought in some additional students from the High School Theater Guild. And they will be doing four performances in one day. Wow. Yes. So this is trial by fire. They are really going to see what theater is all about mm -hmm. and see if they want to really pursue that professionally or if they just want to do it for fun. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they will be performing for Panther Academy for the kindergartners. They will be performing for all of Morningside Elementary and Helmwood Heights Elementary. So that's about a thousand people that's between wonderful. those three performances. And then they're going to do an evening performance at six o'clock um, and it will be free to the public. So for any students that might not have made it over or missed it because they were sick or um, or other schools in the Hardin County or other districts parents want to bring them it's Thursday November 21st at six o'clock at the Elizabethtown Performing Arts Center. Great and tell us a little bit about the play itself. Yes it is set in Pond Town. Um, all the characters are uh, creatures or part of the atmosphere. We have the sky and the sun and we have frogs and a toad and a lizard um, and a rat and 
the uh, there are so many messages. They talk about um, that everyone is of value, that everyone has something to offer. You can't judge a book by its cover. Um, there are a couple of bullies in the show, and a couple the lizard and the quote unquote dumb blonde frog get together and teach them why bullying is wrong. Um, they talk about recycling and taking care of our planet and um, just helping each other, just all good messages and it's fun. It's a really fun show. The kids, um, none of them have ever done children's theater. So it took a while to get them to understand being an animal yeah. or being the sun <laughs> or the sky. Um, that those are, you know, bringing personalities um, to those and it has been challenging, but they're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, they're looking forward to it. Great, what else is going on? Well, we also, in the midst of our rehearsals, we have Morningside Drama Club's oh. um, rehearsals going on. They are doing A Spirited Christmas, uh, written again by Tim Dennis, uh, Laura Beth Hayes, and he are, are directing and I'm assisting. And uh, it is uh, kind of a cross between Ghostbusters mm. and uh, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. I get so you that. can imagine well, how those two can come I, together. We'll talk later, but I, I wrote and produced a, a production in New York that was called The Xmas Files that was okay. combining The X Files and Christmas Carol. Okay. So, so I kind I'm, I'm already in. Yes. I get, I yes. get where you, you're going. You get it. I get it. You yeah. get it. And they have over 100 students involved between cast and choir and crew. Um, they just have a phenomenal drama club every year. And their production is Thursday, December 5th at 7 o'clock. And it, again, is free and open to the public. So there's two theater yeah. productions that mm -hmm. you can come and bring your family and the grandkids and have a nice night out. Um, so they are busy with their rehearsals. We're kind of passing each other. Oh, sure. Uh, there are days that we As have both of them. one comes, the other's in. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're all we're both working together on the sets and stuff. Laura Beth Hayes and I work a lot together um, for all the drama clubs in the district. Um, well, and, but we're kind of passing each other. <laughs> I was going to say, and and I I I've worked with Laura Beth as well. Mm -hmm. Just just share a little bit about how wonderful this person is. Oh, she's and amazing. She does more with a half hour of the day than most people do with half the day. She does. I don't think she sleeps. Um, but I never see her with coffee either. She's very, <laughs> very health conscious. Um, I would be living on Starbucks like through an IV if I were her. Um, but yes, yeah, she, she does amazing things with the drama club. Her dad writes the plays. Um, they direct it together. She's, um, she's got my youngest in her um, third grade class. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know she's just a wonderful human being yeah, and wonderful yeah. teacher. You, you can't say enough good things about her, but she is the first one to jump in yeah. uh, when you need help. I went to her for where the green things play and I was like, I've got to make a tailpipe <laughs> and I need a baby rattle that is like, honey, I shrunk the kid's size mm. because the frog and the rat are tall high schoolers. Um, and she's like, Oh yeah, we can do that. That's no problem. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. You're right. Exactly. Here you go. Here's my list. Um, and yeah, she had she sent me a text yesterday. I've drawn out the set and I'm making a list of supplies. And I'm like, you are just amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, because one play with a hundred kids in it isn't yeah. enough. She's gonna help me with mine too. At the same time. At the same yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And opening two weeks apart. Yeah. I guess. So yeah, she's she's truly amazing. Yeah. Well, and in addition to these two wonderful programs, you still have yes. other programs that are happening in correlation with the schools as yes. well. Yes, yes, we do. Of course, our drama clubs are meeting um, at the same time that we have all of this. Um, but we also have T.K. Stone uh, Middle School's band concert. Mm -hmm. Their holiday concert is Monday, December 9th at 7 o'clock. And then we have the high school the next night for their concert at 6 o'clock and Wednesday the 13th at 6.30, uh, and this, these are December dates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, so mm -hmm. December 9th, 10th, and then the 13th, mm -hmm. we have TK Stone Middle School and Elizabethtown High School Choir. Together, gotcha. Yes, together. Middle uh, school band, high school band, middle school and high school choir. Yes. All that week. 
<laughs> all that week. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. That's how we. That's how that's we do good, it. That's good scheduling. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, school ends when it ends, yeah. and we've got to squeeze everything in mm -hmm. before winter break. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. We, we just got through do doing Christmas Carol, which yes. was uh, at part of our season, the radio drama, and that mm -hmm. was on the 2nd of November, and that was l the first of probably 30 to 40 mm -hmm. Christmas-themed events that will happen on our stage between November 2nd and Christmas Eve. Right. And they just they just keep coming. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they do. I'm pretty much done with carols by the time Christmas Eve. I, I bet. And uh, they started with Christmas music in October. In the stores and, I refuse and stuff, yes. On the radio, too. Yes. Yes. Know, yes. Whole, and yeah. I just refuse. I refuse until after <laughs> Thanksgiving. It is. I will not. <laughs> I want to enjoy Thanksgiving, and then I will celebrate Christmas. Well, we will give thanks till the next time you're here, and you can tell us what else is happening. Yes. Well, All thank right. you for having me. Anytime. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. <laughs> next up, we have Gwen Sears with us representing the Hardin County Playhouse. And Gwen, is, is this your first time on this show? Have you done the show before? I have stage managed none since, mm. but not have not done none crackers before. And have you ever done so. the monthly marquee with, with Carla no, or me or anything before? Well, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. We Thank got you. a first timer. <laughs> <laughs> and you are Good directing none crackers I am. for Hardin County Playhouse I am this the year. Guest and you said, you said you stage managed last time? I did uh, none, none Sense none years sense. ago. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, the none crackers is a Christmas, you know. Uh, musical and I haven't done that one but it's been a lot of fun so far and it's the sequel yes. to nonsense yes so yes. what is nonsense and what is nuncrackers if people are not familiar with well these it's shows? uh it's a, a tiny little show with uh four nuns and a, a priest and uh, they have lots of little um oh I don't know how you say it they've got their own little quirks about them each one had their own got one from Brooklyn, we got one that's a country girl, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, You might remember Sister Amnesia, who okay. got hit in the head with a crucifix, and that's how she and got that name. She's just not been quite right since that's then. True. That's gotcha. true, that's yeah. true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's a hoot. They're all good. <laughs> and um, the performances of, these are all community actors. Yes. And, um, what is that like for you, for you from your perspective? Because I, I know, it, let's let's back up just a second. Okay. This is not your first time directing, though. Uh, no, not, it is on the, uh, with Hardin County Playhouse. Mm -hmm. I've done a, lots of things with the church before. And, and yes. just a little bit about that kind of experience. Because well, that is, you know, there is, there, I always say there are similarities between doing community theater mm -hmm. and professional theater, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of differences, too. True. And I would assume church theater is kind of its own entity as mm -hmm. well. It's uh, usually just youth group is what I work with and uh, teenagers, you know, and they are, uh, it's been, you know, it's, there's challenges, but it's, it's all good too, so. And what church yeah. was this for? Uh, we do Radcliffe United Methodist Church is where gotcha. I go, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, how did this come about that you were going to be directing for Hardin County Playhouse? Someone knows me from the church and said, you can do this. And I said, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and because, you know, I, it, to me, it's a little bit bigger than what I'm used to doing. Like we were just saying, um, yeah. Right. And uh, so that's the difference. But uh, I thought about it for a while and I said, okay. And, you know, they asked me to do it. So there so I you, am. So you've had auditions. How far yes. are you into the rehearsal process? We have been uh, going about four weeks already, and we got That's, about four more right to go. The, yeah, I was going to say, you're right in the middle, yes. aren't you? Mm -hmm. We're in that point where you're like, okay, we're going to get this, and then you go, I wish we were a little further, but, you know, I don't want to be there too soon, mm -hmm. you know. You don't want to peak too early. That's right. That's right. And so how, how are you steering this ship so that you dock at, on um, opening night? Well, we have been uh, doing kids, you know, we have uh, nine kids in the show. Oh, okay. Nine children, should I say. 
uh, for I was still ages with the from four nuns and the priest. Yeah. Okay. So we have. I'm sorry. No, it's all up. good. <laughs> we have the four nuns and the priest, and then we have nine children also. Oh, wow. And it's a kind of a family affair. We got the the priest has a couple of grandkids in him, and they're twins. And the guy playing and, the priest. Right. Let's be right. specific. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. This priest probably wouldn't have kids. <laughs> right. Right. Of course, you know, they have their own little shenanigans about them. You don't know about these people, you know. <laughs> but um, we, we have, um, you know, uh, 14 in the cast. And so it's been it's been good. I mean, we're, like you said, halfway there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having dance um, on the side. We're having some music rehearsals on the side. And then all the blocking that and putting it all together. And it's all going to come together all at the same time. Exactly. That's yeah. that's how it works. So, And I've even got family in it. Aaron Cunnigan is doing my choreo choreography oh, okay. for me and so I'm real pleased to have her helping. Well you know that. and that that is part of the fun of uh, community theater. Some of my fondest memories growing up are doing shows with my brother mm -hmm. and in particular doing shows with my father. Mm -hmm. um, that time that we got to spend together running lines in the truck on right. the way to rehearsal mm -hmm. and uh, getting to blow off teenage steam by getting to yell at my father's character on stage. Right. And probably <laughs> vice versa, you know, that, you, that we would yeah. never do at home, you mm -hmm. know, that wouldn't go over well, but you could, you could uh, excise those could demons on stage. somebody else for a while. Yeah, you know? exactly. Just, yeah, Just let being it go. able to be somebody else uh -huh. is a great, right. great therapeutic thing to be able mm -hmm. to do. So when is, when is nonsense? nonsense? Not nonsense, nonsense, crackers is going to be December 6th, 7th and 8th and 12th through the 15th. So it's um, the first weekend, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's 7 o'clock p.m. on Friday and Saturday, 3 o'clock p.m. on Sunday. Then the next weekend, we're gonna have it Thursday mm -hmm. through Sunday. Gotcha. And the evenings are at 7 p.m. and Sundays are at 3. So. And how can people find out about tickets? And uh, well, they need to go online, www.hardencountyplayhouse.com or they can call 270-351-0577 and get tickets that way. The shows have been, um, are going to be at ECTC. It's at, always good to, mm -hmm. this yes. one of those things I think people know by now, but right. you're right, that's yeah. good to bring up. Mm -hmm. And the it's Science at, Auditorium. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, on I love that space. I do too. I just it's love it. It's small, but I, but I love it. I, I you know, it's just, it's perfect. You yeah. know, the acoustics are good in there, stuff. So it's really going to be fun. So, Excellent. and the cast has been great. Wonderful. So. Well, thank you so much for well, being with you. us. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. Charles Dickens considered a Christmas carol to be a ghost story of Christmas. That seems all the more appropriate with the pack's recent radio drama production of Dickens' Christmas Carol falling so close on the heels of Halloween. It also brings to mind an early Christmas morning when I was young and had my own visit from a Christmas spirit. I was at that age when I still wanted to believe in Santa Claus, but doubt had set in. How is it all possible, even with eight tiny reindeer? My suspension of disbelief was stretched as thin as the tinsel that my mother insisted we hung poorly on the Christmas tree in the living room. Winter had hit Hardin County hard that year, and walking through our yard in Runnyville was like wading through a seven-layer salad as each step crunched down through layer after layer of snow upon ice upon snow. That Christmas Eve brought yet another deluge of ice. The front yard and bowed trees glistened outside the tall living room windows of our farmhouse as the sun began to rise on Christmas Day. My parents were still fast asleep, but my younger brother and I had already tiptoed downstairs to see what was in our stockings before they awoke. Although this brazen act was permitted by my parents, yeah, so they could get a few more minutes of rest, I'm sure, my brother and I were forbidden to look under the tree, which stood tantalizingly only a few feet from where our stockings hung. It was still very dark, but the rising sun bouncing off the snow and the ice outside illuminated the room just enough to silhouette the tree and the treasures surrounding it. What could a single side-glancing peak hurt, huh? Right. That's when I saw her. Him. It. Right next to the tree, I spied the silhouette of an angel. 
I quickly looked away, grabbed my brother by the arm, and ran with him to my parents' bedroom. Any thought of biding our time with stockings stuffed with the healthy, hippie 70s treats like molasses candy and carob-covered raisins had vanished from my head. Mom, Dad, wake up! The Christmas angel is in the living room! All right. Now, mind you, I had never heard tell of such a being ever before. This creature had sprung to life, fully formed in my subconscious, with a backstory forming right behind it. This was the answer, I thought to myself in a flurry. A fat man in a sleigh? No way. But an angel, ha <laughs> ha, the Christmas angel. That, that all made sense. I dragged my groggy parents back to the living room, and sure enough, there it remained, backlit in the window. I could see clearly now the silhouette of a bowed head, bowing as if turned away from us in prayer with a small wing on each side and a dress flowing down to the ground. Dad flicked on the light switch. Bozo! My brother cried out as he ran to smack the inflated punching bag that stood in the very spot once held by my mythological vision. The one and only ever appearance of the Christmas angel. How about you? Do you have your own ghost story of Christmas that you'd like to have shared? If so, tell me about it at lovins at thepack.net and maybe, just maybe, we'll get the chance to bring it to life at the pack. In the meantime, I hope you become part of the pack's family and visit us at the Nutcracker. And we hope that you had the opportunity to come join us at Dickens Christmas Carol earlier this month. Nutcracker will be the final weekend before Christmas, and you can learn more about it at thepack.net. In closing, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of the family and friends, volunteer and Hardin County School staff that make everything that we do at the Hardin County Schools Performing Arts Center possible. At this time of the year, we give thanks to all of you for making what we do possible to give to others. And now we'll scroll through the events of all activities we have happening in the Hardin County area. Have a very happy Thanksgiving.